Ahai Hawaii has a very special history. Not a lot of people know, but it was, it was created at the request of our mo'i, Kamehameha Ekahi. And Kamehameha Ekahi, we, we always think about him as this amazing war general and battle strategist, but he was also an amazing diplomat and a great thinker and, and strategist in so many other ways. And as he's engaging with foreign powers coming to Hawaii, he sees these symbols high being flown aboard their ships. And of course, in our traditional times, we didn't have high, but we had symbols that mark significant areas. We had, of course, our kahili. We had, of course, a pulo ulo'u. And even if you go a little bit more rustic, we had la'i, hau, um, different elements that will just mark special spaces. So he understood this concept of special markings and, and, and like kahili in particular, specific to certain ali'i. And so when he saw these on, on the vessels, he, he liked how they looked. He enjoyed it, he appreciated it, at least according to many of the mo'olelo. And in some of his exchanges with Captain Vancouver, who had made multiple trips to Hawaii and, made a, and built a great pilina and, and friendship with Kamehameha, on his final voyage in 1794, um, Captain Vancouver gifts Kamehameha the Red Ensign. Now the Red Ensign is a flag that has the Union Jack in the upper corner, but the entire field is red. It's a unique flag to the British Navy. Kamehameha received this flag, he loves this flag. He sees it as a special gift, a special offering. And he would fly it at his hale, sometimes when he was going to battle, but he had this high. Now once all of the conquests of Hawaii um, is concluded, and of course, as we know, the Moko Kiawe, Hawaii Island unifies Hawaii, and that is why we are called Hawaii today, is because Kamehameha is a Kohala chief, a Hawaii Island chief, Hawaii Island unifies all of our Pai Aina under one. He immediately has our people turn back to the Aina, turn back to the soil, huli kalima ilalo, mahi ai, malama or loko ia. But he also sees a need to build more unity. Now we're not these island um, chiefdoms, and now we're one Pai Aina, ko Hawaii Pai Aina. And so he wants a symbol created. And so he commissions the high Hawaii to be created. And he has George Beckley, Captain George Beckley, and Captain Alexander Adams has these two advisors help him to create and craft our High Hawaii. Now the first written documentation of the High is noted in 1816 by Russian Captain Otto von Kotzebue. And he documents the High as being flown in Honolulu Harbor, right down over here um, near Kalamakukui. And he notices it having, um, I believe he documents it as seven stripes with the Union Jack in the upper corner and alternating with uh, red, white, and blue stripes emblematic of the islands. Now this is the first foreign documentation of our High Hawaii. And so it's safe to assume that right around 1816 is the origins of the High that we know today. Now there are different variations in Mo'olelo of different color patterns. The number of stripes, sometimes eight, sometimes nine, um, but always had that jack in the upper corner. Now this jack symbolized this um, relationship with Great Britain as Kamehameha had um, with, with Vancouver, he had Great Britain as a protectorate under, it wasn't an official um, discussion, but it was something that they had talked through. And so in a lot of ways, when he was flying the flag, it was as if Great Britain was protecting Hawaii. And so in a very, I think it's a very savvy way, but Kamehameha chooses to have this emblem on our high. Now this high is created to unify our people. This will be our symbol of Aloha Aina for generations to come. Now he's very strategic with it. Why not have the biggest, baddest navy in the world's Union Jack on your high whenever you're traveling the oceans? And it, we have a special relationship with this powerful country. And so Kamehameha has the Union Jack. He also has the stripes. And it, it often is referred to the eight major islands. Now the varying accounts, I cannot pinpoint to say the 1816 flag only had eight or had nine, but according to Kotzebue, there was seven or nine um, stripes. And so it's, it's hard to pinpoint that. But as the history evolves, uh, Kamehameha's sons start to build relationships with Great Britain on their own. And they're trying to establish this relationship where Great Britain would see Hawaii as its own country. As we know, Liho Liho is unsuccessful. He dies on his journey to England. And as he's returned home, all of our high are flown at half-mass. 
And our people, you know, we're starting to see how they, the high is being used in different formats. But the half mass kind of was telling everybody that our Mo'i had passed away abroad. And sure enough, as he returned to shore, and, the, and, and news had reached before, but the ceremonies were held and, and to honor Liho Liho. But his brother, Kawi Keuli, Kamehameha Ekolu, as he is renowned for his taking of knowledge from around the world, and of course, keeping pa'a with our Ike Hawaii, he, he's probably one of the most balanced of our Kamehamehas in, in, in a lot of ways, where he kept a lot of the traditional practices, but was seeking constantly new knowledge. And much like his brother, he fought to have literacy in Hawaii. He made all of these movements here. Um, but of course, our high Hawaii being a symbol throughout the Paya Aina, but he saw foreign encroachment being our issue. And so Kaui Keuli sends our emissaries, Timoteo Ha'alileo, uh, William Richards, and Sir George Simpson to America, to Great Britain, and France to secure the recognition of Hawa the Hawaiian Kingdom sovereignty. And this is like a mission impossible. I mean, these are, you know, they're from a small island nation traveling all the way across the world in this time, in this era where racism was extremely prevalent. Uh, Kaui, uh, Kaui Keoli's, uh, there's accounts of Ha'alileo dealing with racism on the way to, um, Great, to Great Britain in America. And they, they're on their mission, they're, they're making these um, agreements. In 1842, America signs on that they will recognize Hawaii's sovereignty. But meanwhile, home here, we deal with the Paulette affair. Um, a land dispute goes on with Richard Charlton and Kaui Keuli. This elevates to um, a message being sent to Admiral Thomas. Thomas sends Paulette, but Paulette comes with kind of almost hostile intentions and takes over Hawaii. And we, we notice as the Paulette affair, but from February of 1843 all the way to July, our Pai Aina is occupied by Great Britain. And one of the unfortunate things was Paulette has all of our high Hawaii burnt and destroyed. And if you can imagine the eha of our people seeing this, this symbol of our Lahui, not knowing what is the status of Kaui Keuli and our Mo'i and our government, it was a very troubling time. Fortunately, Kaui Keoli was able to get the message out of what was going on. Admiral Thomas also receives Paulette's message. They're very conflicting, so he comes to Hawaii to investigate. And Admiral Thomas immediately recognizes the Heva, asks for the audience of Kaui Keoli. And at a very special ceremony at a park, later named after this Admiral, now known as Thomas Square, there's a special ceremony held on July 31st of that year, 1843. And the Union Jack is lowered, and our beautiful High Hawaii is risen again. And this day is known as La Ho'i Ho'i Ea, or the day that sovereignty is restored. Now, Kaui Keoli continues down the road to Kauai Ha'o Church after this celebration and ceremony. And at the church is where the La Ho'i is gathered. And this is where he makes his famous olelo. He says, Ua mau ke ea o ka aina i ka pono. And roughly translated, the sovereignty of our land is preserved through pono actions. And that was Thomas and uh, the Mo'i great, of uh, Great Britain, Queen Victoria, making things pono um, because of Paulette's rogue actions. This triggers a huge celebration at Kaneakapupu. This becomes a first Hawaiian national holiday. But meanwhile, Ha'alilioma, who are abroad, are still on this mission. And this is a very serious kuleana to make Hawaii a sovereign nation. And they're finally able to get a meeting with leaders of France and Great Britain and at the Court of London is signed on November 28, 1843, the Anglo-French Proclamation. Um, this document is basically the birth of the Hawaiian nation and it recognizes Great Britain and France recognizing the Sandwich Islands as having a government capable of leading and running itself. And so this is a form of recognizing Hawaii's independence. And so November 28, 1843 is our Hawaiian Independence Day and that is known as La Ku'oko'a. And so these huge national holidays all happening in 1843. High Hawaii is the symbol of our Pai'aina. About 1845, the high is standardized. So now there's no more nine stripes, seven stripes. No, everything is gonna be eight stripes. The flag is gonna be eight by 16. So it's basically the height and the, the width. The width is double the height. So our flag is a little bit different than the high that we see today, but they standardize the High Hawaii and they make that the known flag and they fly it throughout the Pai'aina. 
whenever our ali'i would travel, that would be the high that was taken with them. Um, we also see a high that has a crown on it, and that's the high kalaunu. Those are high that are specific to the mo'i. And so if Kawi Keuli was on board a vessel, you'd see the high Hawaii, but also his high kalaunu to symbolize that. Um, an example of that today is Buckingham Palace. If you go to Buckingham Palace, and if the queen is, home, is in residence there, you'll see a special flag, not the Union Jack flying, but you'll see her royal standard, her crown flag. And if she's not present, then you'll just see the Union Jack. And so we had that same type of practice here in Hawaii. Again, our mo'i were learning constantly from the different leaders of the world how to run a country in this way. And our, our kupuna, our ali, were so brilliant at taking in the best of the honua and bringing it home to Hawaii, but also keeping it unique to who we are and not losing track of that. I think that's a very important piece. Now, our high Hawaii is such an important symbol, but 50 years passed celebrating our lahoi ho'i, laku okoa, and we know of the, the sad mo'olelo of the overthrow of our kingdom's government. Um, Nili'u Kalani is, in, is, is removed from the throne. This is a really, you know, sad time for our Lahui. And so our people would fly the High Hawaii as a form of kue, as a form of resistance. And this concept of Aloha Aina comes to light again with the Hui Aloha Aina organizing themselves to gather petitions to stop a proposed annexation of Hawaii. And they're, able, they're successful through our Lahui, over 90% of our people signing through Aloha Aina to stop the annexation of Hawaii. And so we see the High Hawaii as a symbol of resistance. Um, of course, we have all of these stories of the, the, um, the quilts that our kupuna made with High Hawaii, and even prominent ali'i wanting to, if they were to pass away, wanting the High Hawaii to be laid to rest upon them. And so as we fast forward to, to now, and we see our beautiful High Hawaii, we need to remember all of these stories, these connections to our ali'i, this, this, this um, connection to our, our sovereign nation being born, to Kamehameha Ekahi. But there's a beautiful, um, in the Nupepa Kekoo Hawaii, I think there's a, a, one of the most beautiful ways that they captured it. And it goes, He hai ho ai lona ia, no ka holo mua, ka maluhia, ka lo kahi, a me ki aloha. And again, translated, our flag represents holo mua, or progress. Maluhia, or peace, the wars are done. Um, Lokahi, unity, our Lahui is one, as, as, as one, one ohana now. And of course, aloha, aloha is, is our superpower. It's what, it's what makes us unique. And the flag represents all of those things. So I love that. Hehai ho ai lona ia no ka holo mua, ka maluhia, ka lo kahi, a me ki aloha. And you even see like in, um, our, our kupuna loved our flag so much. And the first color printed new pepa, and it was redone recently, but in January 1st, 1862, in the New Pepa Kuokoa, they color printed the High Hawaii. And it was such a beautiful image. You read, they have a short history of the High Hawaii. They talk about the flag being created and um, how it was used to trade iliahi and sandalwood, which is a, a very unique mo'olelo. Um, long story short, the flag wasn't recognized. There was all of this confusion. But when they came back to Hawaii, Kamehameha learns about what his harbor does. And so he's learning constantly um, but the flag was created initially to also travel and to represent Hawaii, but would be continued going forward. And so that's all documented in this new pepa with a color printed high. And it is believed by the writers and, and readers at the time that was the first color printed new pepa. And it was probably one of the very first of, of the world color printed newspapers. And the first thing that's color printed is our high Hawaii. And so it's a testament to how much our, our people loved our high. And there's so many nice olelo. It, Kahai nani o Hawaii e mau kona velo ana. We see these all around, and they were captured in Nupepa. But that's the feeling of love that our people had towards our beautiful High Hawaii. And so it's no surprise today that we see the High Hawaii right there with our people, with our Lahui on, on the Mauna, on their backyards, on their trucks. <laughs> Everywhere we go, we start to see the High Hawaii. And the more we understand the history, the more we can see the connection that we're a part of this long line and this long link. And we are just adding our braids to it. We're adding to this mo'olelo. And whenever we see the flag, we should think about the things that make us proud. We are a special lahui. We are a special people. And the high is a great reminder of aloha aina. 
And that's our superpowers, aloha and aloha aina. And so when we see the high, think about those things.